Do you know the difference between TNT and dynamite? Here's a quick trick. If it's a white powder found in sticks, it's dynamite. If it's a yellow crystal, it's TNT. Now, doesn't that make things a tad easier? Many of us, and I mean many, often use these two terms interchangeably. The common misperception is that TNT is the chemical name and dynamite is the colloquial term. But like any good misperception, that's just plain wrong. Let's debunk this myth together. Dynamite was actually invented by the Swedish chemist Alfred Nobel. Yes, the very same Nobel of the Nobel Prize fame. So, here's a handy mnemonic to remember Dynamite's inventor. Winning a Nobel Prize would be dynamite. The alternative, that winning would be TNT, just doesn't make any sense. So, next time you're talking about explosives, remember, winning a Nobel Prize would indeed be dynamite. The tale of dynamite begins with a Swedish chemist named Alfred Nobel. This gentleman, in the year 1867, patented a new explosive compound that would forever change the world of construction, mining and warfare. His mission? To make nitroglycerin, a highly volatile and dangerous substance safer to handle. Nobel's solution was a stroke of genius. He combined nitroglycerin with diatomaceous earth, derived from the ground-up shells of microscopic diatoms. This combination created a stable compound that wouldn't explode from mere jostling, unlike its nitroglycerin counterpart. To this mix, he also added sodium carbonate, a substance found in everyday items like baking soda and soaps. This concoction, my friends, is what we now know as dynamite. Now, you might find it amusing that this explosive innovation was initially marketed as Nobel's safety blasting powder. A bit of a misnomer considering an unfortunate incident at the family factory resulted in the demise of Alfred Nobel's brother, Emile. Yet, despite this tragic event, Nobel's invention proved to be revolutionary in its field. It was reliable, powerful and relatively safe compared to the alternatives of the time. The immense profits generated by his dynamite patent allowed Nobel to leave a lasting legacy in the form of the Nobel Prizes. You see, Alfred Nobel was a man of contrasts, a man who made his fortune from an invention that could cause great destruction, yet yearned for peace and progress. It's said that a premature obituary in a French newspaper dubbed him a merchant of death, a label that is believed to have greatly affected him. Perhaps it was this stark portrayal that motivated him to establish the Nobel Prizes, to honour those who brought great benefit to mankind. Among these prizes, one stands out for its irony, the Nobel Peace Prize. Funded by the profits of an invention that has been used in countless wars, the Peace Prize is a testament to Nobel's desire for a better world. So dynamite, the invention of the merchant of death, ironically funds the Nobel Peace Prize. A poignant reminder that even from the most destructive forces, we can create avenues for peace and progress. Now let's turn our attention to TNT, another high explosive. TNT, or trinitrotoluene if you're into syllables, is a yellowish compound that was discovered in Germany in 1863 by Joseph Wilbrand. Unlike dynamite, TNT is not as powerful and requires a bit more effort to detonate, but it has a significant advantage, its stability. It's so stable, in fact, that Wilbrand didn't lose a single sibling to an explosion. TNT's stability allows it to be melted down and poured into shell casings, making it a versatile explosive. However, it's not all sunshine and roses with TNT. This compound is extremely toxic, so don't get any ideas about handling it without proper safety measures. But TNT's story doesn't end there. This explosive is often mixed with other substances to create different types of explosives. For instance, combine TNT with ammonium nitrate and you get Amatol, a military-grade explosive. Remix those two and sprinkle in some powdered aluminum and voila, you have Aminol, a common industrial explosive. So while TNT may not have the same punch as dynamite, it has carved out its own niche in the world of explosives. From military applications to industrial uses, TNT's stability and versatility have made it a valuable tool. Despite its toxicity, TNT has proven to be an incredibly useful explosive. The difference between TNT and dynamite isn't helped by popular culture. Movies and songs often swap these two terms carelessly, muddling the clear distinction between the two. Take, for instance, the iconic rock band ACDC. In their electrifying song TNT, the late lead singer Bon Scott exclaims, I'm TNT, I'm dynamite. Quite a contradiction, isn't it? But now you know better. So next time you hear Bon Scott declare, I'm TNT, I'm dynamite, you'll know the difference.